This program is brought to you by Real Estimate, Australia's number one property value estimate. Get your real estimate today on realestate.com.au. Welcome back. There are 3,001 homes scheduled to be auctioned this week. That's up 36% compared to the same week last year. New South Wales will hold about 1,060 auctions with roughly 900 of them in Sydney. Victoria will hold about 1,400 auctions with virtually all of them in Melbourne. South Australia will hold about 150 auctions with most of them in Adelaide. Western Australia, the NT and Tasmania will hold 24 auctions between them. The ACT will hold about 100 auctions. Take a look at the most viewed properties going to auction this weekend. And in New South Wales, it's 9 Thackeray Street, Winston Hills. This large five-bedder comes with three bathrooms, two parking spots and a pool. It also has 23 speakers in the ceiling. In Victoria, the top property is 21 Wakanui Street, Northcote. This sleek designed four-bedder has three bathrooms and space for three cars. Price guide, about $3.6 million. In Queensland, the top property is 79 Dakar Road, Algester. This giant five bedder sits on more than 3,000 square metres and is in Brisbane's southern suburbs. The home has parking for five cars and a large Balinese-style pool house. Top property in South Australia is 11 Shipster Street, Torrensville. This classic three-bedroom sandstone cottage was built in 1910. Uh, price guide for this one is about $750,000. And the top property in Western Australia is 21 Marchesi Loop Spearwood. This four-bedder has three bathrooms and a pool in the backyard. It was only built in 2017. And this three-bedroom home, is this is the top property this week. This three-bedroom home sits on a quiet street, has a well-thought-out floor plan with large living spaces and glass sliding doors that open up onto the backyard. The home has two bathrooms, parking for two cars and a study, which could be used as a fourth bedroom. Uh, outside, there's a low-maintenance garden and a projector screen for watching movies in the outdoor entertaining area. The property here sits on 344 square metres. There's no price guide for this one, and the agents are taking offers. National house prices have surged to a record high in February. Here's Paul Ryan from REA Group. Yeah, another 3,000 auctions scheduled this weekend, similar to what we saw last weekend. We've seen auction clearance rates hold up despite the um, increase in transaction numbers, around 63% in Sydney and Melbourne. Uh, it shows that really um, housing demand remains really strong. Yeah, what sort of figures are you getting on the REA Group website now? How much interest is there from buyers? Uh, still a huge amount of interest. I think there's a lot of people, despite challenging affordability with higher interest rates, a lot of people are seeing conditions in the rental market and, and really trying to get out of that if, if they possibly can. We've seen a bunch of Super Saturdays, more than 1,000 homes for sale in both Melbourne and Sydney over the past couple of weeks. Are you expecting a lot more of those as we get towards the Easter public holidays? Yeah, uh, with the earlier Easter, I'm expecting a continued, like, lots of strong weekends for auction numbers leading into Easter. Um, but that being said, I think transaction numbers are higher than we would expect, even just given that earlier Easter timing this year. And just talk us through the two key selling seasons. You've got spring and autumn. We're officially in autumn now. Uh, yeah, so we've seen these, these are the two times. So um, spring and that kind of late summer period are the two key times that sellers, um, particularly in auction markets of Sydney and Melbourne, list their homes. Um, and, and the evidence shows that actually sellers tend to get slightly higher prices in those two big selling seasons, which shows that buyers are really out in force at those times as well. OK, it's the 1st of March. That means your February Home Price Index report has just been released today. We've got a chart showing uh, what's happened to property prices across Australia. You can see their national prices up about half a percent, 761000 uh, Capital cities clearly doing a little bit better than the regional areas. Yeah, that's a trend we've seen over the past year or so. Um, regional areas are still performing above average. Um, that's a really um, post the COVID-19 pandemic. We've seen a lot of demand for people moving to regional areas. But the past year or so has really seen uh, capitals come back into force. And obviously, um, the capitals reopening up and, you know, work from home kind of turning into hybrid work um, has really reignited the cities, and particularly the smaller capitals. We still continue to see Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth show really strong growth. But the surprising one has been... Um, Melbourne and Sydney at the start of this year. Yeah, we got a chart showing uh, the capital city prices and just showing the f how expensive it is now. I mean, Sydney median prices are a bit over a million, but Brisbane drawn equal to Melbourne in the month of February. Yeah, that was something we, we have seen coming for a while, but it's impressive when it has happened. Brisbane has, has now, you know, equal the second um, or 
after the ACT, third most expensive um, market across the country. Uh, and that has been due to like continued strong demand for people to move to Brisbane um, since the pandemic, but even really predating the pandemic. That's been a, a long run trend. There was another, we just had a graphic showing Hobart prices actually down. What's going on in the Tasmanian property market? The uh, Tasmanian property market has been quite weak. I think um, prices in Hobart in particular overran fundamentals. It's one of the strongest performing markets over the past decade. Uh, so I think prices there are just a little higher. They're higher than Melbourne, for instance, and it's a much smaller uh, city. So um, maybe there's a bit more of an adjustment to come there. That being said, the rental market's still really tight there. So there's still a lot of housing demand in Hobart. Now, the final graphic we can put up is the regional prices across various states of Australia. And you can see... Um, New South Wales, $713,000 as a median value. Uh, pretty strong, really, when you look at the regional parts of Australia. But regional South Australia up almost 1.1% in the month. Oh, in the year, sorry. No, yeah. the month. Yeah, 1% in the yeah. month. That's, that's, that's enormously that's strong. Uh, and regional um, South Australia has performed incredibly well over the past three years. I think there's a lot of kind of, part, of really pleasant parts of regional SA that people haven't really looked at until kind of the COVID period and people started to look further afield. Um, and regional markets all across the country have been big beneficiaries, but in particular, it's been New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia that have really benefited the most. Now, I know you've also released a report on stamp duty burden uh, recently. How big a part of buying and selling a home or a burden on first home buyers is that stamp duty cost. Yeah, I don't think it comes as any surprise for anyone in the market how much of a burden stamp duty is. Uh, but this new report, which crunches the numbers on how much it has cost over the past, shows that currently in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, to buy a median priced home, the average earner would spend six months of their income on stamp duty. And that compares in the 1990s, it was a bit over one month of average earnings. So there's been this big shift. And, and it's no surprise really that we're seeing fewer housing transactions. And that means people are able to move, you know, closer to work opportunities, closer to family, less because of this huge impost of stamp duty. And do governments actually have the guts to change stamp duty? <laughs> yeah, it's a huge part of, of state government revenue. Um, whether they can, you know, rationalise this and kind of wean themselves off this enormous amount of money that's coming through stamp duty and, and really make the... the economy more dynamic and more efficient. That's, that's what economists are always calling for. Like it is one of the most inefficient taxes because it stops people doing things that they otherwise would do. Um, I think it's something we need to increasingly talk about. Paul Ryan from REA Group, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much.